It is Tuesday, the 25th day of July 2017, and it is news time here on Canal de English. I am Ellie Smith. The headlines. The PCC or the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon's court case against a certain consortium has once again been postponed. However, in this newscast, the lead counsel, Mr. Eta Bison, will be voicing his frustration. The rate of death affecting kidney patients will certainly drop as we hear that 11 tons of kidney treatment kits has arrived the country and it is currently being fanned out around the various hospitals on the national territory. Meanwhile, in India, its president is currently being sworn in or has already been sworn in. While it is a highly ceremonial post, but it is very important to this country, India, which is the world's most populous democracy. Those were the headlines. As you, as we, you may know already, uh, the case pitting the PCC moderator, that is the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, against a certain consortium of parents has been adjourned for the second time to September 6, 2017. Our reporter caught up with the lead defense counsel, Barrister Etabison, who expressed his frustration. <laughs> It is very, very sad. The Criminal Procedure Code has provided how an adjournment is carried out. The Criminal Procedure Code says the adjournment is done in court in a loud voice. It doesn't even just say do it. It describes how you should do it. Loud eh? voice. Let them tell me one other case. One other case that has been adjourned in this fashion. And over the radio. That's what I'm saying. This over fashion. Over the radio. Yes. One other case. And there were two months. No, I'm not. What, what is it's an abuse of justice, but elsewhere it is good news for whom? For kidney patients whose death rate was on the rise, but we hear that 11 tons of kidney treatment kids have arrived the country and have been found out all over the national territory. Beatrice Ngamo tells us more. Fifteen Jamshi have been receiving two sessions a week, but in the past one month, she's been on one session of treatment a week. The arrival of treatment kids, miracle indeed. As I came today, our doctor promised us that we will go back to our two dialysis. So that is the great miracle that God has done in our lives. Public Health Minister this July 24th came to reassure patients at the Yaoundé General Hospital. 11 tons of consumables of dialysis. During the weekend, all centers in Cameroon start to receive uh, their part, the court part, and actually the different centers are working well in the good rhythm. Yeah, the wit is one of hope. We are so happy because uh, the kids are there and the minister is there has confirmed by arriving here. The best of all information is that to acquire new machines as out of 20 year, just nine operational and the machines can perform just three sessions a day. Is uh, this high inscription in the budget to allocate more funds to permit a general hospital or Yawundi and Duala to buy 25 new generator per center. These are patients are also praying. We are praying that God should give us transplant center here. Because if we have transplant center, our life will change. 
nobody will die because of dialysis. The minister used his visit to appeal to patients to follow treatment at regional hospitals also, not to overcrowd the Yaoundé and Douala General Hospitals. Solidarity and dialogue, the minister added, is key. Well, meanwhile, Cameroon's 10 regional governors are presently meeting in Yaoundé for their first biannual conference of the year 2017. The conference is presided over by the Minister of Territorial Administration and Decentralization, René Emmanuel Sadi. The conference has a theme preserving social peace and protecting national boundaries. Among issues to be addressed will be the rise of attacks perpetrated in the far north region by the terrorist group Boko Haram, rising insecurity in the national territories. And they will also be looking for ways and means to overcome the rising rate of insecurity nationally. Meanwhile, in Bafia, during holidays as elsewhere around the country, youth choose to do diverse activities while some become ordinary or occasional hawkers or doing one or two menial jobs. Some choose to accompany their parents to the farms. Lorian Faika Ngamini has more. It's holidays again. We are in Bafia in the Mbama Minubu Division. Here, yeah. I met Shaim with his brothers and sisters spend their holidays by assisting their parents work in their cocoa plantation. They started doing this since last month, immediately classes ended. Carrying out this agricultural activity will enable them to learn new things. I am very happy to work in the farm because when I come here, it enables us to create link and be more closer to my brothers and sisters. My sister and I rotate between cooking and coming to the farm. Each time I come here, I learn new things and it makes me happy. The plantation is located 20 kilometers away from Bafia, Bam and Inubu division, and they go there twice a week. According to me, holidays is a period to move to other activities because after spending nine months of studies, it is good to do something else and feel more relaxing. Then I believe coming to the farm will enable my children to acquire a good mastery of agriculture. And I being a son of a farmer, I see it very important for my children to have a good mastery of this activity too. Ce que font les ouvriers ici sur place. Mais pour que, après moi, la plantation ne reste pas en deux mains inexpertes. These children prefer helping their parents in the farm than to be idling at home. People, or the youth of Mbam Enubu and precisely Bafia, are choosing to work on the farms and are smiling. In the northwest region, over 15 houses have been brought down by strong winds in Jakiri, Bui Division. According to residents, the wind was preceded by showers of rains before it became so severe. Rooftops and houses, rooftops were blown away and somehow some buildings have been brought down. And as a result, several people in that part of the country have been rendered homeless. Still in the Northwest region, the new senior divisional officer for Bui has been installed and told to work in conviviality with the people of Bui division and also make that division to be known and not to be just a launching path for their promotion within the administration. Gladys Ambo Dibang has more. The people of Bui are peaceful conscious of their rights, hospitable and welcoming. But you have to be cautious of politicians loitering around you for favor because they are the same people who will pray for your downfall. This is the advice the mayor for the Kumbu Council gave to the new senior divisional officer for Boy, Mo Emil Simon, during a ceremony to officially take up function as the new administrator. He is expected to maintain peace 
fight against criminality, protect people and their property, and help resolve the water crisis in Kumbu. This should come with a lot of new ideas and particularly with uh, greater motivation so that we can take the development of our people and camps and understand the culture of the place, understand uh, uh, the dynamics of the place and uh, work hand in groups with the community always will tell what we expect to do. Although the efforts of the outgoing senior divisional officer were loaded, the people, however, regrets that he leaves behind a fractured society, totally disintegrated and almost ruined. Nzeki Teofil, the former SDO due on retirement, has been indicted for contributing to the Kumbu water crisis that had dragged on for long. I think uh, one of the things he did was to uh, bring together the traditional uh, rulers and the uh, Everybody together. In fact, he's, uh, he's, he himself is a traditional ruler. He was a nice man. He was a nice person. And I uh, was uh, down to earth uh, and uh, participated actively in all the activities of uh, our land. And uh, was aware of the cultural sensitivity of our land. And I think we wish him well in this time. The ceremony was, however, rich, impomped, and fun Still in the Northwest region, we hear that the follow-up committee on the public investment uh, budget are not happy. Why? Because most of the budgets are prepared in Yaoundé and sent to the regions without proper details. Regina Fongia Leke tells us more why the people of the follow-up committee are not happy with the central government. Three months after the launching of bids to tender for projects under the public investment budget in the Northwest region, the rate of execution stands at 41.02% for the physical execution rate and 10.31% for the financial. That is the main outcome of the first semester meeting of the regional follow-up committee that has held in Bermenda. Out of 480 projects allocated to the region for a little over 7 billion francs CFA, 178 have been completely executed, 149 are ongoing, while 153 are still to begin. Presiding over the meeting, the vice president in the presence of the governor's representative, Vivian Nama, Members were reminded of the importance of their role as watchdogs for the proper construction of edifices and roads for the Northwest region to properly enjoy its share of the national cake. This has been a very, very um, um, exciting meeting, a very important meeting, because um, we have taken a couple of resolutions, or, or not really resolutions as such, but recommendations. The first one, which is very important, is that of an equipment pool. We are recommending that there should be an equipment pool in this region, and the equipment pool should be in the region, not outside of the region. Because uh, for some reason, some equipment uh, pools might be created. A report of the technical subcommittee held a day earlier was read by the regional delegate of the Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Eseke Mbende Ivo. The committee frowned at the continuous allocation of projects from the central administration without sending project details to the region to enable their proper follow-up. These renders work difficult as the contractors tend to despise the committee and regional control mission, saying they are answerable to Yaoundé only. Representatives of beneficiary organizations and divisional delegates of Minipad took turns to give updates on projects in their respective areas. On a happy note, the Public Investment Follow-up Committee noticed the gradual disappearance of abandoned projects. While here in the littoral region, a similar exercise took place and this time around our reporter there was Lorian Ngameni. 585 investment projects have been attributed to the littoral region for 2017 public investment budget. Given a percentage of 83.54%, 
against 81.26% last year. The delay of the project execution can be attributed to many factors. Well, we get uh, this year, but since we are make a work in after this committee, uh, they decided that we are going to to add effort, to make more effort, to to attain the rate uh, the rent of execution needed by the population. Communities who do not respect deadlines for the execution of their projects will henceforth be sanctioned. Uh, you know, at the same period last year, in 2016, we were at 35%, mainly due to uh, poor contribution, or I, I would rather say poor performance by uh, some councils. And this has to be corrected. By 10th of August, we will uh, re direct, redirect uh, these resources to some other able councils. Among 34 communities in the littoral region, Five have attained 30% in project execution. 13 others have less than 5% in the execution of their projects in the littoral region in general. Meanwhile, in India, it has now a new president. It is Ranat Nath Kuvin, who has just been sworn in, becoming the second leader from the oppressed Dalit community to be elected head of state. The 71 year old was dominated by the right wing ruling BJP party in a move analysts say would help Prime Minister Narendra Modi tighten his grip onto power. Mr. Ranath was a former state governor and a lawyer by profession. And it is on that very positive note where Dalit becomes president of India. That we are putting an end to our edition of this news today at four here at Canal de English. Coming up next will be a rebroadcast of the program Obusi by Cletus the Senator. And coming up at 8 p.m. here will be the one and only Kejang Henry Atembe. Tomorrow is another day.